making a run at it, aren't you? Rolling up a stake and going to Vegas. Welcome to the number one poker radio show in the world. This is the Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. One full hour of poker news, entertainment, and lots of Sin City surprises. Now, let's bring on the host. Here is Mark Hoke. All right, everybody, what's up? another Saturday here at the World Series of Poker, but it's kind of a quiet one. It's a little lonely out here. Nate Dallin, my co-host, is actually, of course, working up the hallway. But uh, he's hanging out. Uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. I don't know what's going on over there. But anyway, by the way, our, here, our good friend Ace from Zen Poker Mentoring has uh, boo-booed his back. So I uh, want to wish Ace all the best. Hope you're doing well, buddy. Uh, TDA Summit's still going on. Daniel Negreanu apparently went on a 17-minute rant over there yesterday after he stood up and said, I'll keep this short and simple. <laughs> Not so much. Uh, going off about the first card off the deck rule. I don't know if it's that big of a fight, guys. Really, is it that big of a deal if you, you get over, have to be there when the first card comes off or when the last card comes off? There's some bigger things I think that we have to worry about a little bit in what goes on at poker tournaments than uh, you know when you have to be at your seat. That's kind of a that's kind of a small fight. Now I, I know it's important important for Daniel because of course he's very social with the players, but uh, you know I don't know what to tell you on that one. Kind of a kind of a weird situation over there. But uh, the TDA Summit uh, wrapping up today, and I believe they got started around 10 o'clock this morning. I got started at seven. Ugh. Been here all day, kids. One of those days where things uh, you know, just had to get down here, and I, I just couldn't wait to show up at the World Series of Poker today. <laughs> oh, lordy. But uh, we're having a great time, And uh, but uh, like I said, kind of a slow day. The uh, the DraftKings 50-50 tournament, a little bit light on registration. I think they were expecting a little more of a turnout today. The Planet Hollywood tournament going on over at the M right now as they are having the Hollywood Poker Open Championship Looks like uh, a lot of the players headed over there this afternoon, and we're going to take a look at this DraftKings structure because I'm a little—I uh, was a little perplexed. I was I, somebody was asking me some questions about it today, and I pulled the structure up and was like, "Whoa, what? Uh, what's going on there? This is kind of a little different than what I expected it to be." So we'll take a look at that and see if uh, the first ever sponsored tournament were. Uh, That was uh, actually, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the first sponsor tournament of the World Series of Poker is actually going to meet expectations over here. Like Jesse Caps is here, though. He's running around, so good to see him. All right, and uh, let's see. Well, the players are, looks like they are headed on a break right now from this DraftKings tournament. Uh, not sure where the numbers are at at the moment. Uh, I'll see if we can get a quick refresh on that. So it's going, but uh, right now, WSOP.com, uh, listing 1,018, so not a bad turnout today, but a little bit uh, a little bit short for a, a Saturday $1,500 tournament, to say the least. Um, just looking at some of the players that are in there right now, uh, Aaron Massey's here, Alan Kessler, uh, Stephen G is here, Eddie Sabat, and want to wish our good buddy Eddie Sabat a happy birthday today. Congratulations, Eddie. Hope you have a, you know, a great day to... Uh, celebrate your birthday on uh jim mcmanus in the house uh, tyler patterson is here of course tyler won a bracelet last year uh chris lynn kevin eister kevin saul alex queen uh baseball eric baldwin is here uh greg raymer in the house kyle cartwright andy black barry schulman perry freeman dj mckinnon barry greenstein jonathan aguiar all playing today's 50 50 now here's the structure on this um Give me one second here. We'll get that pulled up for you. But a little different than what I, I, I think a lot of people were expecting. Uh, because uh, typically when these 50-50 tournaments are run, what ends up happening is you'll get to that 50% mark and the players will get their money back. But on this one, the 25th through 50th percentile are getting 1000 back. So it's a $1,500 buy-in. So not uh, so not getting the full buy-in back. Uh, tenth. Uh, the 10th through 25th percentile will. That'll go up to 15. And then the top 
will take the remainder of the prize pool and use a standard prize pool chart to set up their payouts. So pretty, uh, pretty interesting, but a little bit of a different structure, and I don't know if that may have turned some people off on that, considering usually, like I said, it's uh, just one of those things where everybody's getting the, the $1,000. Gavin Smith is in the house. Look at this guy. In case you missed it, we put the podcast up finally. It was a little behind on that. I think Gavin might be sneaking in here. Oh, Lord. No? Is he teasing? Are you teasing? We're on the air. You want to come over and say hi, Gavin? Hi, Mark. Hey, Oleg Smith. It's not Oleg. <laughs> I love Old G. It. I know it is. Don't mess around with my nickname. It's all right. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. Playing the 50-50 uh, the here? I am playing that. Um, a little light on the turnout today. Were you guys expecting more players? What, you, what were you thinking? Well, I think there's a couple other really good tournaments going on. Yeah. That's, that's hurting things. I think that Plant of Hollywood's a really busy one, and uh, then they got that one that started yesterday at the M. So, I don't know. It's still pretty good. Yeah, over 1,000 players, so not bad. What do you think about the structure on this? With the, you know, how they're setting that up, that it's, you're actually, you know, you're getting the... Uh, the one thousand dollars for twenty fifth through fiftieth percent or fifty percent. I mean, I, I don't know. I kind of think it's kind of neat, and uh, I was talking to some guys the other day about it, and uh, uh, they're like, "Why would you want to play that tournament? Uh, you know, it's, it's paying so many people." So, so I was like, "That was distracting." Anyways, uh, yeah. oh, they were saying, "Why would you want to play? Why would you want to play that tournament? You know." Because uh, so much money from first is going to go off, and I'm like, well, why yeah. wouldn't you want to play that tournament? You know, you're you're playing against a bunch of people that don't even want to win. You That's know, a good right? point. Because you're looking, at, you're playing with a bunch of Kesslers. Yeah, uh, that it, it is. It is an Alan Kessler kind of tournament. How did how did Alan get a BCP shirt? By the way, what is a BCP shirt? Well, that is that is big cock poker. <laughs> we know, he doesn't qualify for that. So yeah. I, when do you think the last time Alan Kessler had sexual relations is? <laughs> I will not venture a guest on that. <laughs> Alan, probably, what, if Alan decided to pay for it, I'm sure he'd get a discount. <laughs> 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 Alan's got some sort of frequent flyer card flying around. <laughs> Alan, what's going on? Are you winning it? There you go. That's, see, I think that was the big appeal of this thing. I mean, I was looking at it and saying, you know, I mean, just try and hend and mob this thing. I, 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 th I, I think that they'll probably make the money before right around dinner time, you know? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, you don't only have to get 500 players out of here, so it shouldn't take too long. <laughs> wow. You have a friend? I don't know who that is, but I'd like to know who it is. You don't know who that was? No. Wow, she was cute. I'd like to know who she is. Todd Brunson's here, too. Hi, Todd Brunson. I can I barely yeah, but I can hear you. I don't know much. We're just doing a show. You want to say hi to the world real quick? No, okay, that's legit. We'll save it for the party. I'm gonna periscope the uh, Frank Casella party. <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna win the beer pong tournament. He's not gonna win the beer pong tournament. I don't know. I think, he is the odds-on favorite to win the beer I think, pong tournament. I think Todd Brunson is a very overrated beer pong player. Ah, uh, see, I'm gonna disagree with you on that. I'm going to heavily disagree with you on that. And if, and if they brought well, just about everything you do is heavily. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good point. But if they brought if they brought laser tag over, if we had laser tag at Frank Casella's party, which we should do, Todd, that's what we should do. We should bring some laser tag stuff over to Frank's place. We should bring some laser tag stuff over to Frank's place on the on the fourth. It's not big enough. I know that's what makes it even more fun. Paintball. Ooh, now that would be bad. That could be really bad. I don't know if Frank would appreciate it. you think Frank would like paintballs going off at his house? No. No. I'm going to vote no. I don't know. Steve Zolotow's here, too, on the break. <laughs> oh, everybody's coming over. I'm just going to make some room. Hi, it's Steve Z. In the 60s, I used to be a draft <laughs> dodger. Now okay. I'm a draft king. Wow. Wow, he went totally corporate on that. Yeah, totally corporate. I'm, I'm, I'm horribly disappointed. That was, that was certainly not nearly as funny as he thought it was. Yeah, but you know it worked. <laughs> I mean, it worked. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'm waiting for them. Do you think Zol? They should have patched Zola Tal up for that. I'm gonna go find that guy. Did you see the owner? The guy that the owner CEO of DraftKings that was did the introductions today. 
No, I wasn't here on time. He's wearing a. Uh, he had a. You know, he had a sport coat on and everything, but he was wearing a matching short pants. Kind of like what I have on, but they were they were suit pants. Yeah. But, but they were shorts. Yeah. That sounds weird to me. Hey, I, you, I don't like it. Hey, you know what? He owns DraftKings. He can do what he wants, I guess. Well, now he can. Yeah. Now he's worth a lot of money, probably. Not bad. So he can buy all the short pants suits he wants. Yeah. Well, believe but me, it's Vegas. It's hot as hell out here. It's very strange to me, though, how all these guys can own companies that don't make money, but then they still get filthy rich. Yeah. Well, that's sometimes it seems why like you the, don't make money. They they kind of like to pull it sometimes. It seems sometimes. like the number one thing you should be able to do in business is make money. Yeah. Otherwise, you shouldn't be in business. Exactly. But I guess now it's more about raising money than it is about making money. Yeah. This do, seems weird to me. Just do what you got to do, bro. Well, I'll tell you what. A lot going on here at the series, too, other than this DraftKings event. We got a couple of bracelets that went out yesterday, including a good buddy of mine. Who won yesterday? Uh, ben Yu. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He won the Lemon Hold'em. Would be my buddy, but we'll we'll hit that in a second. Matt, o, uh, Matt O'Donnell wins event number 47. Uh, he picks up, uh, wins a $2,500 No Limit Hold'em tournament uh, as he beat out Timor Margolin in that one. So O'Donnell wins his first World Series of Poker Bracelet. Congratulations to Matt. I know that he's uh, yeah. had a couple close calls in the past. Yeah. I think Robert Mizraki is going to go back to back in the Dealer's Choice event he, too. He might. Uh, yeah, we're getting to that one. Uh, we already did Elliot Lesnar. Oh, no, I have that one up there. Uh, Young G wins the fifteen hundred dollars. That's, a, that's the guy from Anchorage that I play poker with. Yeah, back in Anchorage. You, you know this guy. I was going to yeah. ask you. You know, this yeah, guy. We, we call him DJ. Pretty, you know, twenty-five year veteran of the game and uh, you know, from from Anchorage. He, he, used, to be, he used to be a uh, poker dealer up in Anchorage, but I think he only deals like one day a week now. Yeah, I probably won't do that anymore. No, probably not. I think he's. I think he's good. Um, yeah, it was a nice score for him. Uh, let me see if I can find it here real quick because I know I had it, and then I went to a different page because I want to read more about this gentleman. Uh, two hundred thirty-one thousand, one hundred two bucks. Yeah, I believe that they made a little bit of a deal, though. Well, we'll just pretend. Huh? You know, we're not supposed to talk about that at the World Series. Well, you know what? If you got, if you're gonna make him, I don't. I didn't think you were allowed to make deals at the World Series. I didn't either. And I, I don't make deals anyways in any tournament so whatever it's up to them but i think they got 185 each okay that's legit uh event 50 the ten thousand dollar limit hold'em championship and a, a quest finally has been ended as ben Yu, the professor not byu professor ben as everybody knows him just a little live update little tick there wins, i don't know him wins wins event 50 uh ben uh Edges out. Look, I'll get to my head. God, I was looking at these stories and I forgot to change this over. There we go. Uh, ben beats Jesse Martin to win the title, two hundred ninety-one thousand four hundred fifty-six dollars, as Ben Yu uh, captures his first World Series of Poker bracelet. Justin Bonomo finishing third. Alexander Denisov in fourth. Anthony Zeno, another final table for the Z-Man, finishing fifth. So good for Anthony Zeno. How about that? That guy's an animal. He is. I'll tell you what, and really nice guy too. Very low key. I don't like him. Oh, you don't. I don't know if you've never met him. Well, he's, you should. He's winning too much money. Oh, well, you'd like the guy. No. You, you, well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to give him any money, but a lot of people do. <laughs> they dig the dude. I'm sure he's nice. Um, event number 51, $3,000 No Limit Hold'em, six-handed event. Uh, let's get a refresh on that real quick. They are starting to whittle it down. 24 players left. Alexander Debus leading the way. He is a German, uh, followed by Kirill Radzenvau. Out of Belarus, the Belarusians looking for another bracelet. Do they have one? They already won one this year. No way. Yeah, so Belarus could be ahead of some some countries. Maybe catch Canada. I, has Canada got any? Uh, you got one so far, I know for sure. I have to check and see if it was two. Uh, Justin Liberto in third, David Merrifield in fourth, Stephen Chidwick right up there again. Boy, is he having a great World Series uh, in fifth right now. Jason Less in sixth. Uh, same or other notables in there. Taylor Parr is hanging around in that one. Uh, Rep Porter, uh, right now in twenty third. He's gone deep in a few events too. Yeah, he's been having some good runs as well. It's you know, of course that's why you should go to the pokeracademy dot com backslash <laughs> mark and you know get that course. King of the King of the Frogs, Mark Hoke, everyone. You, you betcha. Somebody called me the Phil Helmy for the poker radio the other day. <laughs> that's that's, that's, that's that, fairly accurate. I think that's a compliment. You, na you name drop an sob. Hey, what can I say? Uh, event fifty two dealers, the fifteen hundred dollar dealers choice. Uh, we'll get an update on that one. They are down to ten. Uh, Matt 
Shemazic. Not sure if I got that right or not. Leading the way, 545,000. Chris Claude, Nicky, Sloppy Claude, one of the guys that plays in Mac Lance's game out there on the East yeah, Coast yeah. in that big mix game. Uh, and, he, and he finally did able to 50K. Yes, he did. So he's having a decent run, too. You bet. Uh, Robert S Scott Clemens is in there still, too. Yeah, uh, Robert Mizraki looking for his second bracelet of the World Series. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know what that was all about. Uh, he's in third at the moment, 391,000. Carol Fuchs. Uh, Victor Silikovsky, Ilya Krupin, Ual Bronstein, you be in there still. Uh, Konstantin Maslak, Scott Clements, Anton Smirnov, still alive for that bracelet. Who wants to sign that? <laughs> Greg Raymer over here wanting to sign Lucky U Post. Of course, he was a, a prominent figure in that tournament. For that movie. Amazing job. Best actor ever in a poker movie, Greg Raymer. Well, what was he in? Was he in this one? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So he's very proud of it, too. Um, he's not in that one, you liar. You weren't you in Lucky You? I thought you were in Lucky You. Oh, you weren't. You were in another one. Ah, okay, my bad. Well, you should have been in Lucky You. You might have made it better, Greg. <laughs> this is kind of a bad everything in there. Greg, Greg, here, yeah, pass, give, give Greg the... I can't hear what you guys are saying anyway. Yeah, that's okay. I can't ever hope to replace Gavin, so these are my only words. That's it? Wow. That was... That, that is was profound. I'm glad by I started the way, pulling cords. In by the way, anybody, anybody that knows Greg Raymer... That is the absolute least amount of stuff he's ever said. His stories are very that is that's a record on my breezy. <laughs> There's no question about that. Uh, what else we got going on? Event fifty three, the ladies championship. Uh, they are at. Uh, let's refresh that real quick. One hundred twenty one players left. Stephanie Ampetalakitis. She's Canadian, believe it or not, yep. from Toronto, leading the way at the moment. One hundred forty thousand. They run a Bart uh, Bat. Battle, Battle Ravitch. God, why are they doing this to me today? Uh, in second, Kat, oh. Katana Hamadi. Got, I, got, I got a buzz away from you, Stringham, Mark Hoke. And so on. It's time to go back to work. Gavin, I wish you the best of luck. Thank you, sir. Hand and mob this thing up, baby. Gavin Smith stopping by. Trying to win a World Series of Poker bracelet in the DraftKings 50-50 shit tournament. We'll see what he's got. All right. Anyway, uh, back to the ladies. Uh, Tanya Stensdis. What is going on with these names today? My God. Uh, Pastora Mortensen. Uh, Mi Miami Kano. Lorraine McGarry. Darren Ann Parker. Rajet Dudivani. Dudivani. Also uh, in your top 10 uh, listed, at least at the moment. So 121 left in that one. Uh, event number 54. Ten thousand dollar pot limit Omaha tournament. One hundred thirty four players left. Still, plenty of t plenty of play left to go in that one. George Medrano leading the way on that one at the moment. Yuri, <laughs> oh my God, Zivileski. We'll take it. Uh, Warwick, <laughs> there's a Canadian. Uh, Alexander Peterson, Andreas Johansson, Ben Tolerine up there. Steven Saris, Juan Ramirez, Simon Trumper. Also uh, on the big board there, Noah Schwartz in the top 20 at the moment as well in event number 54. And, of course, the two events going off today, the 50-50 DraftKings tournament, which a lot of these players are filing back in towards uh, as they get ready to go. Mark Magazoo at 14000 so that's not even close to being the lead right now. And later on this afternoon, we got a $5,000 turbo no limit hold'em going off. So some of the pros, if they are uh, busting out elsewhere, decide they want to swing over. You happen in that $5,000 turbo, no limit hold'em tournament. So should be a pretty uh, interesting afternoon here. Let's get close to the players actually cashing in this DraftKings tournament. So uh, we'll be kind of keeping an eye on that later this afternoon. They only had registration up through the first two levels. So plenty of time to screw around on that. Uh, player of the Year race, uh, once again led by Mike Gorodinsky. Of course, uh, Mike won the 50K Players Championship and took over the lead from Paul Volpe. Gorodinsky now standing at 1,771.21 points uh, over Volpe's 1,631.59. Olivier Bousquet is in third, 
1,395.66, followed by Phil Galfon, Mark Radoja, Max Pescatori, Brian Hastings, Mike Leah, Barry Hutter, and Ben Yu has now slid into the top 10 for Player of the Year. So congratulations to Ben. A great run for him. Jesse Silby is in 11th. Very nice. So some pretty interesting names at the top of the board here for the Player of the Year as well. All right, and let's see. looks like uh, the player's just heading in there. We'll have a bracelet ceremony, and we may, may have Mike Gordinsky stopping out here to say hi. Jen Shahadi's here, which is always good. So we don't want to step away too long here uh, if we get Mike. Otherwise, uh, yeah, we'll step back and take a commercial break. But a very exciting uh, afternoon for these guys is you know, some of these players may get their first World Series of Poker Cash here pretty shortly. Because once again, half the field is going to pick it up. So it's over 500 players. Uh, they're going to cash uh, in all probability at some point today in this one. Of course, uh, they're just on their first break, but uh, now we're losing, losing some players pretty quickly. And so hopefully we're going get, to uh, get Mike Gordinsky out here. But we have some other interesting stories that we want to hit, too. Uh, we've been kind of waiting to hold off on one uh, about Brian Hastings until we got a little more information about it, and Calvin Air put up a great article about uh, that. the situation that's come up with uh, the now man who's won two World Series of Poker bracelets this year. So we'll talk about that. Uh, we've also got a, one of... Well, I, I, I tell you what, I th I'm curious to see if there's more to this story. I am very curious of what the heck is going on in Alberta, Canada and the uh, WPT Deep Stacks Poker Tour. I had heard about what had happened up there, uh, but we got a great story from Lane Anderson kind of uh, putting a bow on it to a point. But I, I kind of have to wonder if there's more to what... Uh, what is in this story so we're going to take a look at that as well before we get off the show today uh, right now once again the players are heading back in from their break from the DraftKings 2020 tournament as they uh, look to uh, many maybe score their first world series of poker cash all right and uh sounds like mike is up on the stage right now getting his world series of poker bracelet so we're going to hang out here for a little bit as uh, he'll get his chance to uh, collect the Poker Players Championship bracelet. Of course, uh, many feel the most prestigious bracelet here at the World Series. And uh, Gordoninsky managing to come up big and win that title. Of course, earlier in the World Series, lost to Phil Helmuth heads up. But then managed to turn around and uh, come back and has now taken over the World Series of Poker player of the year standing so we're just kind of hanging out here for a little bit as hopefully we're going to get mike to hopefully get mike to come out but what an incredible win for for mike uh bringing home that bracelet i mean it's you know it's such a, a spectacular event hey and brian mycon's here too well mycon's here so of course uh, you know we talked about mycon yesterday uh came back and faced those charges for uh, running a gambling operation in nevada without a license uh, did plead guilty. Apparently, it looks like just got off of the fine, so that situation has been taken care of. All right, and uh, once again, uh, Mike Gordinsky and some of the other players getting bracelets today. Uh, so like I said, just holding on here for a little bit. And, of course, getting back to Gordinsky. Uh, Gordinsky's winning the Poker Players Championship. Of course, he managed to he beat out uh, Jean Robert Balland, who got a lot of mainstream attention because of it. Of course, uh, it was kind of kind of didn't do a real good job explaining who Jean Robert was and acting like uh, he was on TV first before he was a, a top-level poker player. Uh, you know, obviously, Jean Robert, we all know Jean Robert has been around forever. 
But uh, Jean Robert Ballon coming up a little bit short on that. Of course, uh, David Odeby Baker in there, Ben Sulsky in that uh, final four. Chris Klodnicki finished fifth. Dan Kelly was in sixth in that one. So they're just doing their thing. Uh, by the way, Mark Herm out here in the hallway. One of the great online players out there, Dip Throng. Standing around out here right now, hanging out. And it looks like we're playing somebody's national anthem. Not sure whose it is. Uh, just uh, unfortunately, I've got my headphones on, so it's a little bit hard to hear uh, what's going on in there. But yeah, so great stuff happening here at the World Series of Poker. And a couple other stories going on as well. So uh, just, like I said, just kind of hanging out right now. We are hopefully to, hoping to get uh, Mike on the show. But of course, uh, yeah, I'll tell you what, while, we, uh, while I have a second to, and we're waiting for Mike, let's, uh, let's get this piece of business done here real quick. As we are, uh, one second here, throw this up here. We want to thank all of our great sponsors of the show. And, of course, we are the Mark Hoke Show. I want to thank you for joining us out here today at the World Series of Poker. Rep Porter, another deep run here. And, of course, he is in charge of the PokerAcademy.com. You want to get some great poker education, check in with Rep and the guys at ThePokerAcademy.com. If you go to black backslash mark on that, you're going to get a 166-page course guide absolutely free. So check it out today at thepokeracademy.com. ABC Chinese Poker, great app. You have a lot of fun with that. Of course, if you want to learn to play open face or you want to play with all your friends and blow all your money, knock yourself out with the ABC Chinese Poker app. You can download that for, download that for your iPhone or iPad today. All right, and the 50 is getting a rolling here again. Here's our good friends at BlueRail.net, our website provider. I'll tell you what, you need some great work done, personal business, you need to handle the money, whatever you got to do, check it out at BlueRail.net. Bob will take care of you. Just uh, head on over to that website and check them out. Of course, uh, BlueRail.net, how far do you want to go? The PPC Poker Tour has got a couple of great events coming up here as well as uh, we look forward to heading out to Tampa Bay Downs again. We'll be joining them at the beginning of the month, uh, July 8th through the 12th, and we'll be headed down to Fort Myers for the, the 22nd through the 26th. So check out all the terrific events coming up at with the PPC Poker Tour at ppcpokertour.com. Pokershop.com. Hey, we're going to be giving away three chip cases, and we decided we're going to do it on each of the first day one. So 1,000 chip case for day one. That works pr pretty well. So make sure you go to pokershop.com, 10% off with the code HOKE at pokershop.com. There we go, Nevada Poker League. Hey, uh, yeah, pretty simple do here. Play poker for free. Just go to any one of the 20 locations that are listed on the Nevada Poker League site, and you can win cash and all sorts of great prizes and just have a blast playing poker. That's what it's all about. So make sure you check those guys out at nevadapokerleague.com today. Certainly appreciate it. Uh, share my pair that great app don't tell the story a million times just tell it once real easy just to make an animated video of your uh, favorite hand or something crazy that went on maybe it's not your favorite hand but whatever works uh, play it post and share it with share my pair available on your cellular device today uh, of course the Seminole hard rock poker open coming up $5 million guaranteed freeze out. It's going to be something down there, guys. Four li simultaneous live streams. You're going to have a great time. Come down and join us uh, starting on July 30th through August 19th. And for more information, go to SHRPO.com. The Grindettes, of course, the terrific ladies team. Make sure you check them out at Grindettes.com. Katie Stone, Katie Dozer, Jen Shahadi, and Jamie Kerstetter. Of course, we've been working with them for a long time, so make sure you say hi to them at Grindettes.com, Twitter, at Grindettes, Facebook, Grindettes. For the number one ladies poker team around. And let's see, Poker Night in America, of course, we've got our good friend Todd Anderson, uh, Chris Hansen, and the team, Nolan Dalla, putting on a terrific show for you. CBS Sports Network, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific Time. If you want looking for the best in poker television, you've got it right there. Check it out at Poker Night in America, and of course, online at PokerNight.com. 
KSHP.com. And, of course, we are on KSHP 1400 AM in Las Vegas. You can also catch us wherever on KSHP.com. Follow the show at Mark Hoke Show, Facebook, The Mark Hoke Show. And, of course, catch our live shows that we do wherever we are, including the World Series of Poker, at MarkHokeShow.com. All right. So there we go. All right. Uh, so we're going to see. Uh, we, we did have plan to have Mike on. We'll see if he was able to. he's going to be able to make it down here. I'm not sure we can hit him up some other time, but uh, we'll see if uh, Mike Gordinsky is going to be available to us here in a little bit. So we'll keep our fingers crossed on that one. Um, and I'll tell you what, in the meantime, how about, I want to get into this Brian Hastings story. Wow, what a what an interesting tale this has turned out to be. Uh, of course, Brian had won two World Series of Poker bracelets this year. He's now has got three in the pocket. Uh, but Hastings has been accused of multi-accounting and using a VPN to cheat high-stakes players, according to the headline. Um, very interesting. Uh, right now, um, on June 21st, David Bakes Baker is making a lot of news at this World Series. Um, said that uh, in a tweet, so after I final tabled the Scoop 2K, a bunch of well-known pros messaged me uh, telling that uh, at Brian C. Hastings was behind the Noel Hayes account on Poker Stars, And, of course, the, you know, the forum started doing a little digging on this and uh, alleged that Hastings was playing on a Poker Stars account carrying the name Noel Hayes while he was in the United States, which, uh, of course, you cannot do. Now, of course, uh, we remember, uh, and of course, this is coming at a terrible time because of all the uh, pot potential uh, legislation coming up about people uh, doing things that they're not supposed to do online and uh, with uh, online poker. And Baker, you know, pretty much uh, laid it out there that uh, this is, you know, this is what's going on and, uh, you know, things weren't uh, too good. And, uh, you know, Brian had a couple of posts in response. He hasn't denied the whole thing. But, uh, like I said, there's a really good story on CalvinAir.com if you want to break it down. But, uh, but unfortunately, a, a really uh, difficult story to, to handle with a guy who's uh, chasing down player of the year. Had, a, you know, all those great prop bets and everything that he managed to cash in on. And now... Um, well, it has uh, some controversy surrounding him a little bit as uh, we'll see if uh, Brian Hazen is going to be getting a little bit of trouble with poker stars here as uh, you know the weeks are going weeks to come should uh, bring the answer to that but boy I'll tell you but it's a uh, it's a pretty tough spot for Hastings right now so and actually you know haven't seen much of Brian after he uh, won that second bracelet and this uh, this story hit so we'll try and uh, we'll keep it updated on uh, where this whole thing ends up but uh, yeah brian hastings kind of hitting the rail a little bit on this and by the way you know and of course uh, he he actually made a second post i want to i do want to read this uh, uh he said i find it ironic so many of you have a strong opinion I mean that not a one of single one of you have, uh, have shot me a private message yet uh we can debate morality all you want but there's a real sociopathic element of posting nasty things to the world while at the same time being unwilling to have a real conversation about the topic uh, I get the mob mentality to pile on and hate on one who's more successful than the mobsters, but just realize that in an adult world, more problems are solved through real conversation than blind hatred. <laughs> I'm not necessarily going to disagree with that. But uh, pretty uh, a pretty bad spot for Hastings right now. So we'll uh, see what goes on with, uh, with Brian Hastings and that Poker Stars account. All right, uh, I'll tell you what, uh, we're going to step away, take a break, and if uh, if we do get Mike out here, we'll just uh, stop the break and get him in. But let's step back and uh, take a commercial break here on the Mark Hoke Show, and we come back, deep stacks, deep trouble. Well, maybe not so much. guess we'll find out. But uh, let's step back and take a break, and we'll be right back here on the Mark Hoke Show. We're live from the World Series of Poker. Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm here with two-time WSOP bracelet winner, Rep Porter. Rep, you just launched a new poker training site, thepokeracademy.com. What's one tip you can give to players that will immediately improve their game? One mistake I see a lot of newer tournament players make is they vary their bet size depending on their hand strength. 
Some players, when they have a big hand, bet big, and when they have a small hand, bet small. Other players bet smaller when they want you to call them and bet bigger when they want you to fold. These type of betting pattern tells are very easy to pick up on if you're sitting at the table with the same player for a long time. It's really important in tournament play to keep your bet sizing consistent so that your opponents aren't able to discern what kind of hand you have by the amount that you're betting. That's a great tip for you from Rep Porter at thepokeracademy.com. It's a completely different kind of training site. Thepokeracademy.com offers a no-limit tournament course that gives you a comprehensive strategy from the beginning through all the stages of tournament play. Use the link thepokeracademy.com slash mark to get a free 166-page course guide when you buy the course. That's thepokeracademy.com slash mark. All right, we're going to break back in here a second because we've got a very happy guy here. I know we're in a commercial break, but we're going to we're going to get this man on here, the man who is actually out in front of the World Series of Poker Player of the Year race and uh, not having a bad time out here for sure, the Poker Player's Champion, Mike Gordinsky. How you doing, buddy? Good. How are you? Congratulations to you, my friend. Thank you. Thank you. So how much fun was it getting up there and picking that bracelet up and just moving there a little bit? Today? Sure. Uh, yeah, it's fun. Um, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm not much for the spotlight, so it's kind of uh, going through the motions. But uh, yeah. yeah, no, it's good. It's good to actually have it in my hands. Well, it has been quite a topsy. Oh, that is beautiful. Look at that. Here, we'll, we'll put that on. We'll put that on the camera yeah, here. Yeah, go ahead. Fun. Let's get that yeah, in we'll there. Just, uh, make it look good. Um, of course, early in the World Series, lost a heartbreaker to Phil Helmuth. Yeah. Uh, you know, take us through that one first, though. What that was like to be playing against Phil heads up for a bracelet. Uh, yeah, it was exciting. I mean, I'm sure that's on like a lot of people's bucket list. It was. Uh, it was cool. He's a interesting character. He kind of uh, wears his emotions on his sleeve. It wasn't my most pleasant loss of all time, but uh, yeah, I'm happy I rebounded. What uh, if somebody ever, ever gets in that situation with Phil, you know, where they're playing them heads up? Mm -hmm. uh, what would you tell them about how to handle the situation? Because, like you said, Phil is really, really vocal and uh, you know, kind of do things to try to throw you off yeah. your game. What would you, what would you give him? Well, uh, he actually advice? has a good table presence. He's like. He has like this authoritative table presence, and it's just uh, don't give into it. You know, be confident and play your uh, play your A game. Of course, uh, you know more cash in this World Series, and then you, know, you get to the final table of the Players Championship. What was going through your head when you realized, man, I've got a shot to win this thing? Uh, very good thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, like as I told some other reporters, um, I, I mean, this like you know people dream about winning the main event. I dreamed about winning this tournament. This is uh, this is the one that really meant a lot to me, and it was. It was, I mean, you know, I got to, like, live out a dream, more or less. It was really cool. Yeah, and, of course, you know, some great competition there. And and taking on Jean Robert, another big person. I, boy, you were picking on the picking on the crazy guys in this one, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, or, or they were picking on me, you know. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah it was cool. I was, um, as I got short against JRB, I was just having some dark thoughts here. I was like, I can't just lose to Phil and JRB in the same summer. as up for a bracelet. <laughs> like, this is, this is just unacceptable. So I'm happy that that did not happen. What does this mean to you in your career? I mean, obviously, people, you know, I, I know who you were, and a lot of people have, have seen you had some terrific success mm -hmm. through your career as you've been working your way up. But now you get something like this that, you know, really gets you in the public eye and validates you. You know, where where do you take your career from here now? Um, I mean, I'm open to having it go wherever it goes. Uh, you know, sponsorship type stuff is pretty rare these days for American players, so I don't have my sights set that high. But, uh you know, I'm always happy to do these sorts of interviews and all that. And if something snowballs out of it, great. And if it's just uh, if it's just the payday, the bracelet, and the uh, momentary glory, then I'm very cool with that, too. Why do you dream about this one instead of the main event? Uh, well, I'm just not a very good no-limit player. This, <laughs> this seemed like a more okay. realizable dream. <laughs> Well, you know, I always regard this tournament because <laughs> as as the most prestigious one here. Yeah. To me, I I mean, I, you know, the main event is is the one where you get called the world champion and everything. But I really feel that the the best player is gonna win is the one that wins this tournament. You yeah. Know? I mean, that's that's not necessarily true. Obviously, it is a tournament after all. Yeah. So, you know, there's plenty of variance involved. But yeah, it, this is more of a. Um, I feel like there's more bragging rights behind this tournament because the main event is kind of like you buy a lottery ticket and the best players, you know, they have a bigger edge than the, than the other guys, obviously. But at the end of the day, like, you just have to run so, so, so good to win a main event, final table of main event. And I'm not saying that's not true for the 50K, but there's just, uh, you know, it's deeper. There's, uh, there's I'd imagine, more play. And um, the level of competition is definitely higher. So, yeah. 
and some new games in there this year too. What was that like to have the have the new games added in? Um, from my perspective, I personally like them. They're games that I play a lot and that I have a ton of experience with, and I think I probably have an edge over the field in those two games. Um, but if it's good, like, I mean, it's it's tough to say whether those games are directly responsible for the player drop off. And if they are, you know, I'm fine with going back to the way it was. But um, for me personally, I like having them in there. Were you surprised at that drop off? No, not really. It's just kind of the nature of poker lately. Just less people have money. Okay, that's legit. Yeah. So when the last card hit and you won. Oh man. What what was that like? <laughs> take take us through that the moment uh, when that happened. Honestly, there's just a lot of relief. I I don't know why. Like I, poker never really like makes my heart go anymore. But any time that I've been all in this summer, because I've I've run really good. I made a bunch of final tables. And just, like, sweating all ends in PLO and no limit is just, like, nerve-wracking for me. Mm. I don't know what it is. No matter if I get it in good, bad, whatever. It's just, uh, yeah, it's always a sweat. Well, now you're also leading the player of the year race, too, yeah. uh, thanks to that win. Uh, you know, first, uh, a lot of people have been talking about the standings, and now I, I think I think people feel like, you know, the, the ship's been righted a little bit with your win and that you'd be being out in front. Uh, but are you surprised the way the player of the year race is shaking out right now, the way the scoring's going in the song? I am, actually. I, uh, I was just talking to one of the uh, car player reporters in there before the bracelet ceremony, and he mentioned that there's a guy, I mean, I don't even want to list the name because I don't know if it's, like, disparaging or what, but there's a guy that had, like, no final tables, no cash better than a 12th, and he was like in fourth over guys that had two bracelets, mm -hmm. which uh, I mean I don't know how they're doing the scoring system, but that seems a little disproportionately weighted somehow. So, um, so what does that do to you in terms of the rest of your World Series? Now I know you're playing a lot of events still, yeah. But now you get a little extra pressure because you know the opportunity of a lifetime to to be a World Series of Poker Player of the Year is yeah. right in front of you. I mean, what's it that is. like? Um, yeah, it's really cool. I uh, Honestly, I was going to play every event from there on out, but I just had like a adrenaline dump or whatever it was yesterday, and I just like <laughs> could not bring myself to go here and play another tournament. So I skipped the 10K PLO, which realistically probably is one of my better events anyway. And um, like I'll play the 5K Turbo tonight, the 10K Horse, 10K Dealer's Choice. Um, I don't know what else is coming up. That might actually be it, because I have to skip the main for Best Friend's Wedding. Oh, and, um, really? Wow. Yeah. And so, I don't know, we'll see how I stand at the end of the summer. Maybe I'll go to Berlin, maybe not. You might end up if you have to miss the main event. Uh, that's a possibility. Yeah. So, so wow, that, that is really cool, though. So you're, you're skipping the main to go to for a, a friend's wedding, given the position you're in. I mean, that's, uh, yeah. that's a pretty courageous thing to do. Oh, you know? I mean, I don't even really see it as an option. He's just like a great friend. He's been there my entire life, and uh, I always prioritize my life over poker. So, it's like not even really a question for me. So, last question. Mm -hmm. What do you do to celebrate when you win this huge tournament? Well, you know, I started <laughs> I started the 50K, like, with the flu or whatever's been going around the Rio, and I'm, like, just getting over it now. Uh, so, the night I won, I mean, it had been, like, a grueling five days. So, we just went out to, like, Korean barbecue, got some beers uh, as a small group, and then I'll do, like, a, I don't know, like, a club night or a pool cabana or something at some point in the next few days and just uh, let, let loose for a little bit, and then it's back on the grind. Well, that's awesome. Uh, Congratulations to you, Mike. I know this has been a long, hard road for you to get here. Yeah. And now, you know, you finally got one of those. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> Second one, actually. Yeah, I'm sorry. But, yeah, but this one's, this one's the, the big it is, one. There. It is the big one. Yeah. yeah. Well, congratulations Thank to you, so Mike. Much. Way to go. Cheers. And wish you all the best. Uh, hopefully we'll see you still at top of the uh, top of the player of the year standings. Yeah, I hope so, too. All right. Good all job right. and uh, way to go. Enjoy that thing. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Oh, that's nice. May I w show that to the camera real quick? And I promise I won't drop it. <laughs> So if you that have to drop beautiful. it, just don't steal it and run off with it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for coming over, Mike. Yeah. Appreciate it. All right. There you go. Have a good rest of your summer. Thanks. Thank you. You too. And there is the man who uh, currently stands out in front of the player of the year standings here at the World Series of Poker and wins what I think is the, the most important tournament here, the Poker Players Championship. Picks up the Chip Reese Trophy and uh, a big win for him. So congratulations to Mike Gordinsky, and I want to thank him for taking a second and stopping by. All right, uh, now we're going to get back to that commercial break we were taking, and when we come back, uh, once again, we'll get to uh, the situation with Deep Stacks and so much more. Stick around. We'll be right back. I'm here with two-time WSOP bracelet winner, Rep Porter. Rep, you just launched a new poker training site, thepokeracademy.com. What's one tip you can give to players that will immediately improve their game? One mistake I see a lot of newer tournament players make is they vary their bet size depending on their hand strength. Some players, when they have a big hand, bet big, and when they have a small hand, bet small. Other players bet smaller when they want you to call them and bet bigger when they want you to fold. 
These type of betting pattern tells are very easy to pick up on if you're sitting at the table with the same player for a long time. It's really important in tournament play to keep your bet sizing consistent so that your opponents aren't able to discern what kind of hand you have by the amount that you're betting. That's a great tip for you from Rep Porter at thepokeracademy.com. It's a completely different kind of training site. Thepokeracademy.com offers a no-limit tournament course that gives you a comprehensive strategy from the beginning through all the stages of tournament play. Use the link thepokeracademy.com slash mark to get a free 166-page course guide when you buy the course. That's thepokeracademy.com slash mark. There's nothing better than sitting down to play poker with good friends and cutting loose. And that's what you're going to find when you tune in to Poker Night in America. Poker Night in America is revolutionizing televised poker in a big way. With all the action you love and the hilarious fun you've been missing, come take a seat at the table with all your favorite players. Old and new with Poker Night in America. Mondays, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on CBS Sports Network. And don't forget to visit the show online at Poker Night. So pull up a chair and join us Mondays on Poker Night in America. A little donkey would call my pre-flop bet with a deuce tray. Hey, deuce tray is my lucky hand. And besides, they were suited. Man, I played that hand great. <laughs> that was a real share my pair hand. Share my pair. The best way to share your poker stories with friends for free. Available from the iTunes App Store and Google Play. Download the app now. Pokershop.com is your one-stop shop for all your poker and game room needs. Pokershop.com has you covered with an incredible variety of poker chips and supplies, top quality playing cards, plus gaming tables and room accessories, just like you'd find in your favorite casino. And if you're looking to spruce up your man cave, we offer a wide selection of decor options, from lighting to mirrors, and portable bars to bub stool, to make your game room the one all your friends and family will be talking about. So for everything you need to make your your game night a great night. Go to www.pokershop.com and receive 10% off your purchase with the code HOKE. H-O-K-E. You supply your friends. We supply everything else. Live it. Love it. Pokershop.com. Hi everyone, Mark here. If you're a poker player like me and looking for something different and exciting to play, you should give Open Face Chinese Poker a shot. It has just the right mix of skill, luck, plus a huge dose of the fun factor we're all looking for. There's a reason Open Face Chinese Poker has everyone from the recreational player to the top pros hooked on its thrills, action, and unique social interactions you won't find in Hold'em. An incredible game like this has got to be worth checking out. And it's easy to learn, especially by using the ABC Chinese Poker app. Download the ABC Chinese Poker app on iTunes today and find out what everyone's talking about. And if you have questions about the game, tweet at ABC Chinese Poker and they'll be glad to help you along. So join the Open Face Chinese Poker community today with the ABC Chinese Poker app and we'll see you at the tables. Your business and promotion will only go as far as your website will take you. That's why the Mark Hoke Show has only trusted one name for over two years. BlueRail.net. Whether you need custom website design and development packages or simply need a host for your website, BlueRail is the only developer to turn to. It's time to discover the world-class personalized service only the BlueRail team can provide. Visit us at BlueRail.net. Net and call 520-822-5128 right now for your free consultation today. So get on board at BlueRail.net. How far do you want to go? The PPC Poker Tour is back in action in July with two can't-miss tour stops. Join us at the Silks Poker Room at Tampa Bay Downs for the PPC Tampa Down Summer Series, July 8th through 12th, with a $50,000 guaranteed main event, and then head down to Naples, Fort Myers, Greyhound Track for the Naples Fort Myers Gold Coast Open, July 21st through the 26th, with a $30,000 guaranteed main event. It's your chance to win your way to Aruba for an unforgettable trip to poker paradise at the PPC Aruba Championships. Check out all the information at ppcpokertour.com 
and join the fireworks on the PPC Poker Tour in July. Want more of The Mark Hoke Show? Then follow us on Twitter at Mark Hoke Show and like our Facebook page at The Mark Hoke Show for show news and outstanding poker content from around the world. Plus, enjoy the show anytime by subscribing to our podcasts on iTunes or at markhokeshow.podbean.com. We're even on your mobile phone at markhokeshow.podbean.com backslash mobile. Thanks for listening and being a part of The Mark Hoke Show. Now, let's return to The Mark Hoke Show. The Mark Hoke Show. Here again, your host, Mark Hoke. Uh-oh, Jesse Caps is running. He's out there in the hallway getting all crazy. Like That's what he does. Oh, these crazy kids here at the World Series of Poker. Hey, I'm Mark Hoke. Thanks for being with us today. We're once again live here at the World Series of Poker. I want to thank Mike Gordinsky for stopping by. He's a busy guy, and I appreciate him uh, taking the time to come over after his bracelet ceremony. Boy, I tell you, that, man, I, I I mean, you'd love to win the main event, but that's the one. Oh, that'd be just a terrific one to win. So I want to thank Mike for taking a couple minutes and coming on the show while he's uh, getting ready to play another tournament tonight. And now a very interesting story. I've got some questions about this one. I think I think some research may need to be done on this. Not that research wasn't done already, but I just feel like there might be a little bit more to the story. Don't ask me why. Earlier this year, uh, up in Alberta, uh, the Pure Canadian Gaming Property, uh, which is Casino Yellowhead in Edmonton, uh, hosted a Deep Stacks Poker Tour event which normally wouldn't be much news at all, but <laughs> they ran a live stream up there, which also normally wouldn't be a lot of news at all, except for one little issue. In the AGLC Casino Terms and Conditions and Operating Guides 1.17.8, poker tournaments cannot be filmed or recorded. It's pretty straightforward, you know, poker tournaments cannot be filmed or recorded uh i actually done a couple events up in alberta up at the green eagle casino we're looking forward to, i believe going i mean i think we're headed back up there in december but i did a couple broadcasts up there and was not allowed to put a camera on the table at all because of statute 1.17.8 so we're actually kind of semi doing commentary off a video screen uh that was up in the in the uh in the room uh, for that uh, for that deep stacks event but uh, and of course you know, it is a big subject of controversy up there because they're the only place that i know of that doesn't let you live stream a tournament it's kind of a, a silly rule but at the same time it is the rule well when they uh st in that series that started up there um from april 6th to the 27th there was a live stream all of a sudden, on uh, their their Twitch channel, the Deep Stacks uh, the Deep Stacks Poker Tour was doing a live feed of the event, and uh, they also did a ton of uh, video for YouTube and and so on. Uh, those uh, videos are still up, but as the tournament went on, Apparently, some people were raising questions about the legality of the stream and trying to find out, well, did they get a waiver? What's going on here? Uh -huh, they didn't get a waiver. They did not get a waiver. They just went and did it because that's what they do. You know, just do what they want. So uh, this was brought to the attention of the Alberta Gaming and Liquor Commission. And of course, uh, you know there was there was a lot of talk up there. What are, what's going to happen to this? How is Deep Stacks and you know, the WPT Deep Stacks Poker Tour going to be punished for this? Is the uh, you know what's going to happen to the casino? Uh, casino Yellowhead. I mean, a very very intriguing situation. Well, of course, uh, the AGLC, and this is per an article from our good buddy Lane Anderson uh, of Poker News Canada. The AGLC came down hard with a one hundred dollar fine that's right for for illegally running a live stream 
And even though they knew they couldn't do it, because I can tell you that I've been up there, I knew it. <laughs> I knew they couldn't do it. They were fined 100 bucks. By the way, Chad Holloway, World Series of Zombies. Coming back over, saying hi. He's got some comic books to sell if you want to stop over. Uh, down there in the hallway. But yeah, so uh, this is up on their Sanctions and Decisions page. Um, where a $100 fine was given for recording of a live poker tournament. I will tell you this, that personally, if I'd have known that and you know, that I could have done a broadcast and the casino, and I knew I wouldn't even pay the fine, the casino would have. If I'd have known that it would have cost me $100 to do that, I think I would have done it. But I, I got to say that I'm, I'm very shocked at the WPT Deep Stacks for being willing to just flagrantly, and, 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 this w- and, and honestly, that's what it was, a, a flagrant ignoring of the law. Do we all know that everybody does live streams? Yes. I mean, it's, it's commonplace. It's not a big deal. But when the laws of that, of that province or wherever you go say you can't do that, you can't do that. I mean, it's just, uh, it, it, it's stunning that, uh, especially a, a group associated with the World Poker Tour, who have just run a terrific operation, would end up being associated with, uh, uh, has a group there that uh, decided the law didn't apply to them. And I also know uh, the last time, I w- one time I was up there too, that they used, we were not allowed to use the WPT logo because they have strict, strict prohibitions against companies that work with online, that have online sites. So WPT, because of Club WPT, they weren't allowed to display the WPT logo, and they did anyway. So, you know, I'm not sure what exactly is going on up there, but I I do find it odd. A a $100 fine is worthless. You know, what is a a $100 fine going to be as a deterrent? I, I don't know. I mean, that's just me, but... I, I have to say that I think that it's, uh, you know, it, you, you never know in a situation like that what could have gone on. And, and it, was, it, it was just such a flagrant ignoring of the law and ignoring of the AGLC. And, you know, I, and I think pretty disrespectful to them. You know, you may not agree with their rules, but that's what their rules are. You know, for all you know, they could have come in and shut down the tournament. You know, what, what a disaster that would have been. How, you know, and how inconsiderate of the players is that? to run uh, to do something like that that could jeopardize everything that these players are working for that uh, over that week i'm pretty surprised so so uh you know boo on the deep stacks poker tour gang for for doing that but i'll tell you what the aglc but my question is why is that only a hundred dollar fine you know there's breaches in security that i i looked and some things like that that were you know thousand dollar fines there were some that were pretty light i found one that was 50 bucks if you go on that uh, you can go to Lane Anderson's story. Um, it is uh, ca.pokernews.com. Uh, just search uh, Casino Yellowhead Find, and that should get it to you. But uh, just, an, just an amazingly brazen move by the Deep Stacks Poker Tour people. And I, I, you know, I know a lot of them. I don't know whose decision it was to put that out there, but uh, got to question the judgment on that. Chad, Chad Holloway's here. Chad... Chad's running away. I, ca- I can't hear Chad through the headphones, unfortunately. I was hoping Chad was going to get on the show, but he just sprinted away like, uh, yeah, there he goes. Wow, he did sprint. That's pretty crazy. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, what a what a stunning, uh, uh, I mean, just, uh, I mean, I wor- I've worked with so many tour operators over the years, and I just, I, 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 I have a hard time with a with a tour operator being willing to just go against what the law says i mean it's such a jeopardization of uh of everything you know and and i can't imagine the world poker tour had to be too happy about that either you know maybe they didn't care i don't know i don't know i mean if i was the world poker tour i'd be kind of pissed but that's how it goes i suppose you know we, we don't have a lot of rules in our a lot of people don't think the rules count anymore that is for sure 
All right, uh, let's say what, while we have a couple of minutes, let's go and take a look at uh, some of the tournaments going on today. We'll see if we can give you a little bit of an update on what's happening as uh, we go to event number 51. That's a $3,000 no limit hold'em six-handed event. Uh, they are down to 23 as uh, not sure who that would actually be that's out. Uh, Kirill Radziv now still out in front, 1.8 million. Alexander Debus, 1.45. David Merrifield, 1.4. William Foxen. Uh, Cold Spring Harbor, New York uh, is in fourth right now, 1.1. Justin Liberto also at 1.1. Stephen Chidwick, excuse me, still in, now in sixth. Still at 910,000. Uh, Cornell Simpon in there as well. Jason Less is in the mix. Taylor Parr. Uh, Rip Porter has moved back up. Uh, he's gotten himself into about the 15 hole on this one. Uh, Hugo Pingre uh, still listed in the tournament too. So a lot of uh, a lot of action still to come there in event number 51. F event 52, that is the dealer's choice event. They are down to eight. Ilya Krupin still in the lead, 565,000. Or is in the lead now. Uh, Matt Shizamek. Shmiz Sh sorry. Shemazek. There we go. Uh, 420,000 in second. Uh, Carol Fuchs in third. Robert Mizraki is going down to fourth, but still in pretty good shape. 320,000. Uh, Chris Klodnicki's at 280. Scott Clements, 190. Yuval Bronstein, 155. And Viktor Selavazki at 120. So this is going to be a heck of a final table here coming up. I'll tell you what, uh, these guys uh, in a tight race for the Dealer's Choice event. And you, I'll tell you what, you really have to like Ms. Rocky and Claude Nicky in this one. Of course, uh, Robert won this event last year, and uh, certainly Chris is another guy that has a legitimate opportunity to, uh, with the, his experience in mixed games, to win the Dealer's Choice. So should be a really good finish coming up over there. So those are your two... Big final tables uh, going on, or, well, I shouldn't say final tables, but your two big events that going on right now here at the World Series. Hmm. So good stuff there. So we want to come down and watch some great poker. And you know, certainly recommend you get down to the Rio and check it out. This should be a pretty exciting uh, evening here at the WSOP. All right, and I think, uh, I think that's a, about where we are uh, for the day. So I'm uh, just looking down to see if we've got any more news coming in. Oh, yeah, so I think we're good. Uh, hey, I want to remind you guys, if you want to follow us on Twitter, uh, of course, we're on Facebook at The Mark Hoke Show. Uh, Twitter is Mar at Mark Hoke Show. I want to thank uh, some, uh, we pick up a lot of new followers every day uh, while we're out here. want to thank, uh, welcome Clyde Gaskins at Castle Clyde to the show. Uh, a, let's see, Michael Ferrer. Uh, at CBBF Champ Mike F. He's a, <laughs> believe it or not, guy, 2011 CBBF Canadian National Classic Bodybuilding Overall Champion. So pretty cool to have him on. Uh, we got another checkmark follower. Always enjoy getting those. We've got some terrific ones that follow the show so far. And I uh, want to welcome Brian Brushwood at SH Wood to the show. He is the host of Scam School for Discovery and Hacking uh, and uh, for discovery and hacking the system for Nat Geo, uh, has a couple of number one Billboard comedy albums. So I want to welcome Brian Brushwood to the uh, Mark Hoke Show family. Uh, Elizabeth at Crazy Girl S O W T. Thanks for uh, following there. Uh, who else do we have here? Johnny Poker at Johnny Poker seven o two. Welcome him to the show as well, along with uh, hey, the Red Rock Poker Room. All right and lots of others so uh, i want to thank all of you guys uh that have gotten on the mark Oak show bandwagon we do appreciate it as we get ready to actually with the day of the main event starts uh, we'll be celebrating our fourth year anniversary of doing the show pretty exciting and of course uh once again catch us down here uh, generally at the world series at 2 p.m eastern time and of course on kshp 1400 a.m here in las vegas and kshp.com Wednesdays at 5 Pacific podcasts are up there on markhokeshow.podbean.com and also on iTunes, of course. Love to have you check out our past broadcasts, including with Gavin Smith. Just did a show with him on Wednesday. And I think uh, that's about it. So I think we're good. 
So we will catch you tomorrow down here at the World Series Poker with some new bracelet winners, and uh, hopefully we'll get a shot to say hi to Ben Yu. I'm really proud of him uh, bringing that championship home. I know that was a long, hard quest for him, and Ben, very, very proud of you, my friend. Terrific victory. All right. So, uh, all right. So, and I think uh, we are all set. <laughs> As uh, a book comes flying, oh, Red Porter's, wait, Red Porter's here. Are you on a break? Oh, good. Do you want to say hi real quick while we, uh, you got a second? Hey, let's get Rep in here. He's having a hell of a World Series, by the way. Yeah, so we're not wrapping up. We're getting another super de duper quality guest. The man behind the PokerAcademy.com, Rep Porter. Hello, Mark. How are you? I'm good. Just keep winning, huh? Well, I mean, going deep. Uh, doing well. I'd like to win one of these. Well, I'm sure you would. Yeah. It's been a good summer. Nothing to complain about. No. So uh, what's going on in there right now? Well, there's 22 people left in this 3,000 by and six-handed tournament, and I had about half average, so hanging in there. There you go. Came in a little on the short side today, but chipped up a tiny bit, and the average went up quite a bit because we went from 35 to 22. That'll do it. Yes. So, But you just got to win a pot or two near the end in all these things, no matter how many chips you have. Right. That's so. cool. So, uh, but this this World Series has been pretty solid for you. I mean, like I said, you didn't get the haven't gotten the bracelets, but but you've been just uh, cashing and you know making deep runs all over the place. Yeah, this is my fifth cash, and I got real close to the money in a few of the other tournaments. You know, the um, the structure are you know when they the tournaments play longer, it gives you a better opportunity if you're the better players when you have more chips to really run deep more often. It just takes more time to do that, so it's kind of like. Good on one side and bad on the other. How hard is it for the amateurs coming in here, you know, some of the newer players, with, you know, this increase in chips but uh, not a lot of change in structure? So it's made it, it's made it a lot easier for you guys to be able to make some plays and not have to worry about one mistake and now all of a sudden I'm, you know, it's it's go time. You know, what's it been, I mean, do you, you see that going on right now? Well, I don't know. It's it definitely. I mean, like if you just look at the results and you see the amount of people who have won multiple bracelets or are winning their third or fourth bracelet of their career, and you see like the good players are doing well at a very high rate, you know, getting to the end. And you know, when you take out some of the variance in a poker tournament, when you make it go longer, I mean, ultimately, if you made a poker tournament go a year, in theory, the best player would win, mm -hmm. right? So it definitely leans towards that. There are still you know bad things that can happen and people can get knocked out, but the more time you give. And the more allowance you give for people to play, it gives more time for the good players to express their skill. If anything that has happened in this in this World Series, that would you would you like to add into what you do on your videos with the Poker Academy? And was it, did you maybe pick up something new that you said, "Wow, you know, I, I would really love to have thrown that in there." You may still do, I'm sure. Well, it's an interesting question. I mean, when we made our course, we wanted to make a like a singular course, I would give people a good, solid, fundamental start to playing tournament poker at a, com at a high stakes level, at a competitive level. And there are a lot of topics that you can delve deeply into that we're going to cover s in the future. And so mm -hmm. um, maybe we've sorted out a couple of different topics that we'll make some single sessions for in the future. You know, we were talking about making a limit hold'em cash game course or a no limit cash game course, and then then some single sessions where maybe we talk about playing with position against aggressive players for you know like a two-hour block, and it's mm -hmm. sold as a standalone kind of idea. And so, yes and no. I mean, like I definitely have some. I've refined some of the ideas of what we want to do next for what you know the next things we're going to build are, but at the same time, you know, when we laid out what we wanted this course to be like we we wanted to cover all the basic material and give all you know like a good solid fundamental approach and then a decent amount of the important parts of how to vary your play based on your opponents and other things and all of those things you can drill down a little deeper into once people have that first level of knowledge and you can you know fine tune your game but all those other topics really are in my mind like fine tuning your game you know as opposed to like filling big holes so yeah, there's there's certainly more to poker than what our first course is, but our first course is you know designed to be that building block. That first, you have to understand how poker works before you can get these super sophisticated strategies and try to build them in and understand the context in which those strategies work well. We're getting close to the main event starting. 
Yes. I mean, it's creeping up on us before we know it. That first day, just to give everybody, if you know, maybe if it's their, their first time coming out, what advice would you tell people to to or how to play uh, the day one of the main event? Because you know, there's there's philosophies that some people have of go big or go home, you know, and try and build chips early. There's some people say just sit back, there's no hurry, take your time, let it come to you. Or is the truth somewhere in the middle? Well, I mean, you definitely want to play a game you're comfortable with, and you know, do. Uh, Everybody has different levels of what they're comfortable with. But, I mean, if you end day one with your starting sack, I think you start day two with, like, 60 big blinds and two-hour levels. So, I mean, you, you don't really have to do anything on day one to still have a competitive chip stack on day two. So no need to get crazy or do anything that's out of the ordinary for you. Just, you know, play your regular game, feel comfortable, try to make good, solid decisions. And the, the main event with two-hour levels and, you know, day four before you make the money – it's a long haul. It's not, I'm not going to win, I'm not going to cash on day one, so it doesn't matter what I run my chip stack up to. Mm -hmm. You know, you're still not going to cash till day four, and you're not going to win the tournament until November. You know, seven full days before they settled on November 9. It's a long tournament, and just, you know, be prepared to be patient and just play your regular game and don't get a little uh, too crazy or out of aggressive or, you know, out of character. Yeah, it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a very interesting main event. Do you, do you think it's going to be up or down? from last year i'm gonna vote slightly up okay slightly all right so there's still you know i mean the world series is publishing that the fields are bigger but they had twenty two thousand people in that one exactly on, on yeah. average you know like event per event i think more events are down small but there's a lot of poker players in town the deep stacks are big you know and people always target the main event they come for that and then then when they put the they stack these big buy-in events right before it you know, so you have the uh, the high roller, the one drop high roller, about ten days before the main event. Then you have the twenty five thousand PLO championship, about a week before the main event. Then the ten thousand horse, and then the ten thousand dealer's choice. A lot of people, you know, who are the higher stakes players who are other places, might just show up and come and just play for two weeks before, you know. So they they're not necessarily even in town yet. A mm -hmm. lot of people play the main event. Well, should be a great time and. Uh, Maybe we'll see you on that final table this time around. Oh, that would make me happy. Well, I'm hoping once in my life I get to the November 9. <laughs> yeah, close a couple so times. So close a couple of times, but, man, maybe maybe this is the time. Yes, yeah, so you never know. Sounds so good. Well, I know you got to get back in there. Yes, yeah, so my break's going to end soon. Yeah. Well, thanks for spending it with me. Yeah, no problem. Appreciate it. We'll, well good luck to you soon, Mark. All right, good luck to you, Rep. Let's see if we can get that bracelet this time thanks. around. All right, there you go, Rep Porter. And make sure you guys go to thepokeracademy.com. And, of course, backslash Mark for the free course guide as well. So there you go. Appreciate Rep stopping over here real quick and saying hi to us. All right. Now I think we're good. <laughs> uh, the hallways are empty. It's uh, Everything's quieting down here at the World Series of Poker for the afternoon. And, uh, you know, of course, the 50-50, the DraftKings 50-50 tournament still rolling on in there uh, right in front of us in the Brasilia room along with some other great events. So, yeah. Sorry we had the... Uh, the premature ending to the <laughs> ending to the show. But I uh, want to thank Gavin Smith for stopping over, Mike Gordinsky, and, uh, of course, Rep Porter for joining us. And, uh, of course, uh, the voice of Greg Reamer. Todd Brunson was hanging around, Alan Kessler, too. All right, that's going to do it, guys. Thanks for being with us here on the Mark Hoke Show. We'll catch you tomorrow again at 2 p.m. And uh, maybe we'll see if Rep Porter is going to be playing for a bracelet tomorrow. So thanks for being with us, guys. We'll see you next time on the Mark Hoke Show. Have a great afternoon.